Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are going to be revisiting one of my favorite short scale bases, the Sire U5. Let's do this. This is the Sire U5, a short scale PJ passive instrument from Sire. We reviewed this bass about two years ago, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 claw rating for its great playability, awesome tones, and just an authentic, like, full-scale playing experience, but with a short-scale bass. Many short-scale instruments often pigeonhole themselves in regards to what they're trying to accomplish. But in my opinion, this Sire U5 offers just the tonality of a full-scale instrument in a nice short-scale package. And with this PJ setup with the J pickup in the 70s position, we have a ton of different tones to pick from as well, and they're all very usable. Big thank you to Sire for providing this bass for this video. I really appreciate it. Now, one of the things that makes the Sire U5 so appealing are the specs and the overall value of the instrument. Let's talk about the specs now, starting with the body. The Sire U5 features an alder body in one of three finishes. We have natural with a figured maple top, a sunburst with a figured maple top, and then this mint green with no maple top. So this is the only solid paint option of the three. And as you can see, this small offset jazz body has a binding around it. However, the binding has been discontinued for the mint green finish in 2023. For pickups, we have the Sire PJ Revolution set, and this is a hum canceling J pickup in the bridge position, the 70s position. And then we have our split coil P pickup in the traditional spot right in the center. For controls, this is a passive instrument, so what we're looking at is a volume volume tone setup. There is no pick guard here and no control plate. All the routing is done in the back. The bridge is Sire's traditional vintage style bridge with the ridged saddles. This is just a very solid bridge overall. Plus it allows you to string through the body or string through the bridge, so you have those options. We are currently strung through the body with the stay in tune nickel foundation strings, gauges 45 to 105. Moving on to the neck, we have a short scale, 30 inch scale, maple on maple neck with 20 frets and a nine and a half inch radius on the fingerboard. We have a 38 millimeter nut width and a standard like jazz profile, so it's a relatively thin profile overall. Just like most sires, we have the truss rod adjustment at the heel of the neck and we have a channel in the body to access that easily. However, on the U5, it doesn't appear that the channel is coded. It appears just to be colored the same way as the body. And just like all other models for 2023, they've been updated with the edgeless fingerboard, which is essentially a more rolled edge. It's really comfortable and it's really hard to describe, but you can see it visibly when comparing to a second generation or first generation sire. This is definitely way more rolled and the edges are just very rounded and smooth. And then moving up to the headstock, we have Sire's traditional headstock here with the mint green finish. This is paint matched up at the headstock, whereas the natural and the sunburst both are just have a natural headstock. So this is the only one that has a paint matched headstock as well. We have the metallic font on the headstock, which looks pretty premium. And then we have the Sire tuners. We have a four in line tuner setup of open gear tuners. I've complained about these tuners before. There's nothing wrong with the tuners in regards to stability or functionality. However, in regards to weight, they do cause little instruments like this to neck dive quite a bit. And we'll demonstrate that when we check out the balance. But first, let's turn this bass around. Around back, we have a teeny tiny control cavity here, as well as four string ferrules for our string through body option. We also have a paint matched back, it's just a regular mint green back here, and our angled neck heel with our four screw fender like neck attachment. We have a neck plate here that is branded showing Sire Marcus Miller, and overall a very premium touch. And then moving up to the back of the neck, we can see that this is a satin finish, whereas on the fingerboard we have a gloss finish, which is another nice premium touch that you see on a lot of the Sire 5 series. And then moving up further, we can see the back of this headstock and these open gear tuners, as well as some text indicating that this is an Indonesian made instrument like all sires. And how much does the Sire U5 weigh? This particular example comes in at eight pounds on the dot, which is pretty lightweight for a short scale instrument like this, especially with an alder body and the heavy hardware. That being said, a hardware upgrade on this base can get it sub eight pounds for sure. And we will be doing that in a separate video. And as we all know, weight doesn't really matter if the bass does not balance well. 
So let's see how our Sire U5 balances. In the lap, it is quite a neck diver. And again, I attribute that to the heavy tuners here, as well as the overall tiny body and lightweightness of the instrument. With a strap, it's still neck diving. I definitely feel it tugging as well. Uh, it's not really like a super weighty neck, so you're not really fighting the weight of the neck. Just the overall ergonomics of the instrument combined with the heavy tuners still make it kind of dive quite a bit. Standing up though, I do see it diving just a little bit. Again, this isn't a heavy instrument and the headstock isn't super heavy. But again, a set of Godo GB528 tuners is going to alleviate this neck dive quite a bit. And finally, how much does the Sire U5 cost? At launch, these were $499, and currently in 2023, they are at $534. This is still on the lower end of the price spectrum for the mid-tier short scales, looking at the Sterling by Music Man, G&L, and Gibson, and Fender, and stuff like that. So this is definitely undercutting those in price as well as features. But how does it sound, and how does it play? You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. nice playing short scale and a very nice sounding short scale as well. It has a very good PJ sound with this hum cancelling jazz pickup here. And to have a hum cancelling jazz pickup at this particular price point is something that you don't see in a lot of other PJ basses. Those are usually saved for the higher end stuff. Now in regards to ergonomics, something that I didn't really talk about in my initial review was this edge here. It is a bit of a hard edge, and I think that in a future revision, they should probably go to a more uh, curved regular jazz body instead of this uh, more flat top style. I think it would do better ergonomically overall and make for a better playing experience. But enough of that, let's now talk about the tones and go over to our P pickup. This is a passive instrument, there's no preamp, so all we have is a passive tone control and our two volumes. Here's the P pickup with the tone at 100%. nice P bass tone from this little short scale here with this passive P bass pickup. But let's take our tone control down to about 50% now, and here's what this sounds like. sounding P pickup though I gotta say. Now let's take the tone down all the way. <laughs> Oh man, 
This is a fun little bass. Now let's take the tone control back up and move over to our noiseless jazz pickup that is in the 70s position, slammed right against this bridge here. Here's the jazz pickup with the tone at 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely get that jazz bass bridge pickup tone, or at least mostly there. Because it's a humbucker, the character is ever so slightly different, but you get the vibe for sure, especially with the placement. <laughs> Now one thing I recommend with this particular bass and this pickup is to make sure you raise it up high enough, as when you have it a bit lower it doesn't really have enough output and it sounds a bit weak, so you really need to move it up closer to the strings. However, because the pull pieces aren't really poking out, you can move it up quite a bit without really having to worry about hitting the, the pull pieces with the strings. Now let's take our tone down to about 50%. <laughs> And finally, here's the tone down all the way. <laughs> oh, very nice, very nice. Now let's take our tone back up all the way and bring our neck pickup back into the mix so we have both pickups together. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Now let's take the tone down to 50%. <laughs> Very nice. Now we're going to take our tone back up and bring our bridge pickup down once more because we are going to be playing with a pick. Here is the neck pickup, tone at 100% with a pick. <laughs> I have fun with 
with this. I have fun with this. And let's solo the bridge pickup now with a pick. <laughs> Let's put the pick away, solo RP pickup one more time, and I give this bass a slap. And next here is our bridge pickup soloed. <laughs> Finally, here's both pickups together. And now, let's throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on our Sire U5. I think this is a great little short scale instrument and definitely deserving of the initial five claw rating. One thing that I would improve for sure are the ergonomics in regards to lighter weight tuners. I wish that from the factory they included maybe 3 8 tuners that are like on the M5 and the M7. Smaller tuners that are lighter weight and would definitely reduce the neck dive a bit. However, on a strap, it's definitely more than manageable, and I find the playing experience to be very fun overall. Tonally, I feel like both of these pickups independently do a great job of achieving their particular target tones. The P sounds like a P. The J bridge pickup sounds like a J bridge pickup, especially with some drums behind it. It sounds like that in a mix for sure. Both pickups together, you definitely get a solid tone, though I think the pickups stand out more individually. Now I recently reviewed the Squire Paranormal Rascal and I also gave that a 5 out of 5 claw rating. However, I feel this bass and that bass are targeting kind of different things. This is meant to be a smaller jack of all trades for someone who maybe wants a, just a small instrument because they're small, either for being a child or just a, a small adult human. Uh, I think this is geared more towards that crowd where the Rascal is a very large instrument. In fact, let me grab that right now so we can do a little size comparison. So yeah, as you can see, size-wise, the Rascal 
is definitely a much larger bass, even though they're both 30 inch scale instruments. I'd say that the Sire U5 is definitely uh, more efficient in regards to how it uses its space on the body, and the Squire definitely has a bit more dead space. That being said, I love both of these instruments, and I think that this is an awesome vintage style instrument, where this is much more of a like modern jack of all trades in regards to having like the P tone, the J tone, something that really can kind of do it all. This is more about that vintage thump. This is more about kind of wearing many hats. So I feel like both bases kind of target different things, but they do so exceptionally well. Now I did mention we are going to be upgrading the hardware on our Sire U5 in a separate video. We have Godo GB528 tuners in the nickel finish, and then a Godo 404B04 bridge that's gonna be in here as well. This is the same style bridge that I used in my Sire V5 mod, and I thought that came out very nice. Keep in mind though, this bridge is not a drop-in replacement and will require drilling of all new holes. But that will do it for this video on our Sire U5. Let me know what you think about this little short scale down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Sire U5. And as always, until we groove again.